I now call to order the New Carlisle City Council meeting, Monday, May 7th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Burner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six yep. members present. Thank you. If you all don't stand, mind standing, I will do a short invocation for us tonight. By your heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the ability to meet in this public place, Lord, and giving us the ability to vote in elections and this free country, Father God. Lord, continue to bless our city as it continues to grow and help us with the assistance of our fire levy tomorrow by blessing it as well. Do you say and pray? Amen. Amen. Raise the flag here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. on the minutes. So moved. Second. Mrs. Byrne. All right. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Stay. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shamming. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Minutes accepted. Communications, we do have one, but as the Legion is not here. Um, Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Do the work? Work session. Oh, sorry. So move. Second. Second. Um, Mr. Lauer. Yes. Mr. Sheehan. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. I'm staying. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. And work session minutes accepted. All right, any communications? We do have one, but they are not here. So, city manager report, Mr. Kitka. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, members of council, uh, members of the public. Uh, we'll drop down to G informational items. Uh, we have planning board meeting from April 26th. Uh, notes here we'll need another work session and official planning board hearing. Uh, no final determination as to which covenants will be submitted to council for approval to adopt into our zoning code. A uh, very open and productive meeting. And a thank you to Mr. Cobb, Mr. Cook, and Mayor Reynolds for attending the meeting. Uh, next item is a 2018 Memorial Day walk, and that is set for May 26th. Uh, we'll be meeting at Howard's IGA at 11.30 a.m. and walk to the cemetery. Walk to cemetery begins at noon. Um, purple heart signs. Uh, city manager is gathering quotes for purple heart signs to be located at each city entrance. Uh, we'll submit all materials to council for their approval on the purchase. And great idea, Mr. Mayor. Uh, fire EMS levy. Please vote yes on issue four to keep your fire and EMS department strong. And code enforcement job ad uh, placed in New Carlisle News, and we have had no submissions to date. And uh, that mayor is all I have for the city manager's report. Council. I can entertain any questions. I just had one for Mr. Mayor or Kiko, whoever would like to answer the purple heart signs. Can I just give a little bit more description exactly? So our city in 2015 was declared a purple heart city. We had voted on a resolution, we got the flag. And I was at the Comes to Drill Me and Mr. Bauer, not Daryl Bauer, Mr. Bauer from the uh, Purple Heart Association asked, well, why don't we have signs? Other cities who have purple heart cities don't, so I mm -hmm. thought, well, we should get signs then. How, how big are we ta I mean, talking? We're not about talking like massive like banners. We're talking purple signs uh, about the yay size of a stop sign that says, new, has our city seal, <coughs> our city. So would it maybe go on like our existing city sign, like on the post or something, or? Depends, that's really rainy. I haven't talked, we've talked about like maybe inserting, cause a lot of them are on stop sign poles, and we might do that, but like where there might be space, we could as well. I mean, that's definitely a good idea. Right. I didn't think of it that way, so. Um, yeah, I'll, definitely. Also, just on the top of that suggestion, Mr. Um, Kitko, the, the sign that's by the old water plant, the, the is it the Desert Storm Memorial or, or the? Which? Yeah, I think the 1991 does. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that ours to take care of? Yes. Is it? I believe I believe it's ours. It's on our property. Right. Okay. I just I mean I haven't looked at it lately. Is it doing okay? I mean is it? It's not falling down. I have not looked closely at it myself. Okay. All right. 
I can take a look and see um, oh. what, what kind of shape it's in. No, I don't, I, we, I'll, no, I mean, we'll just, yeah, we'll see where it's okay. at. I mean, haven't looked at it. Anymore. I just don't want out of respect for them. I just don't want it to be rotten and falling over or anything. Yeah, most definitely. Thank you. Fine. And then on the sign, just uh, the Brubaker sign, uh, that Randy is also looking at with the park, working with the park board to replace it. Uh, you know, as you live down there, that sign is old, old mm -hmm. and wooden. It's oh, been yeah. kicked in. It's been screwed like 30 times in this board. So, all right. Okay. Council, anything else? Thank you, Mr. Kitko. You're welcome. Uh, comments from members of the public. And now's the time if you have comments to come to the back of the podium. I see that you're looking. Go ahead, ma'am. If you don't mind giving your name and address for the record, please. Hey, my name is Megan Cui Caspiano, so I live at 230 North Pike Street. Okay, I my notes. Um, I've called the city many times over the past a few years regarding the numerous code violations of my neighbors at 210 North Pike Street. Um, my most pressing concern right now is their tree that's directly next to my property that is um, has a large section of it which is dead and threatening to fall on my home. Um, because of the direction that it is leaning. And it is in violation of city code 1460.26 um, regarding the maintenance of plantings. Um, and I was told when I spoke with city employee Jim Clark that um, he said that the city manager told him that he's aware of the tree in question, but it's not, he's looked at it and it's not gonna fall on my home. Um, and that the city does not have um, to cut down trees that are in violation of code or handle anything about that um, because of section 660 requirements for trimming of trees. Um, and I've reviewed that section of code and it does not speak to my the situation of my tree. That one talks about trees that are um, over city streets or sidewalks and the tree that I'm concerned about is not. It's on the neighbor's property away from the street but leaning towards my home. Um, and I've sent a letter to the, the neighbor, a certified letter, letting them know about the concern with no response. Um, and Mr. Clark told me that, again, that, that it wasn't a concern of the city or not something that the city was able to, to assist with, um, even though it is in violation of city code. Um, this might be a question for Mr. Kitko uh, to work with Mr. Fridge, but if you I can help a little bit. Uh, we spoke on the phone before the meeting okay. and uh, I am well aware of the, we do have an abatement order. Um, this place has been abated. There is someone living there, whether I, it's the owner or the son or whatever, someone living there. Um, but I had mentioned to her, we're going to get it done this early this week. We need to take a deputy for one where someone's living, at least get us escorted in. And they have an issue with uh, a, a pile of like three mattresses that are back in the middle of the yard near the creek, the, the ground. So when we were initially going to start this, we had a ton of rain. So uh, I'm going to get with the deputies, um, get it scheduled, and I told her it'd probably be by Wednesday, okay. hopefully, and um, get that portion done because I already have that in my plate now. Okay. The other part, I said when uh, Mr. Bridge gets back, um, we'll, they'll have to get in contact to, to discuss the tree issue. All right. And would there, be, Mrs. Dinkler, if you don't want to ask me a question, would there be any reason legally we couldn't remove someone's tree? No. No. Okay. You, you may want to contact private legal counsel and um, explore your remedies. Okay, but is that that's not something that, even though it's in violation of city code, that's not something that the city will um, give them a notice for? I haven't been asked to review this particular issue. Um, if I'm asked to review it, I certainly will, but. Okay, can I ask now that you review it or something? Because I've, I've spoken to Mr. Clark about, about it multiple I times. I didn't mean to interrupt okay. you. I have a hard time hearing it. Okay. Here. Um, I have to be directed by the manager to review it. Okay. But um, if I were in your shoes, uh, I would contact, um, since your private property is involved, I would definitely contact private counsel to explore your remedies. Um, and uh, I'd be happy if directed, of course, to, to look at uh, the city's code. But um, that's, I, I, would, I was I was hoping that I wouldn't have to pay out of my pocket since I pay a lot in city taxes that the city would, you know, follow the the city code and, and use the authority that you're given to, you know, cite people when they're not following city code. And it's very clear in the code that all plant materials, especially trees and shrubs, is afflicted with decay, disease, infect, insect infestation, or otherwise considered dangerous shall be removed or appropriately treated. So it's very clear in the code to me, it's very clear. And Mr. Clark told me that that was not something that the city was um, had the authority to do. 
as I'm just becoming aware of this, I don't know if anyone else has heard about this. I have not. This is something I'll definitely talk with our city manager about when he okay. gets back into town. And then, if you don't mind me after the meeting, I will give you my phone number so that we can continue in contact with this situation. Okay. So, All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Also, just a quick question. How long have you lived next to this home? I've lived there for five years, but the current residents have lived there. I, I don't remember exactly when they moved in, but probably, I think it was in, in late 2016. Do you think sometime in 2016. You probably can't answer this, but do you think it's also possibly a health code violation within the home too? I, I could almost guarantee that I mean, just from the home. The there's at least a minimum of five occupants, and I know because I looked at the home to possibly purchase it, it's only about 700 square feet. Okay. And it's, it's trash, the door, they can hardly open and close it. You can see the piles of trash. I provided some pictures uh, to Mr. Ditko um, of the, the piles of trash you know, surrounding the home and like you said, the big pile of mattresses and um, just other trash at the back end of our property and they never maintain the, the yard in any way. My, as I told him earlier, my, the yard was cut one, twice, two times I believe last year. Once when I had my, my boys do it and once when we uh, did an abatement notice on them for that. So every year, you know, the grass grows up. Right to hear until I finally got tired of it and had my boys do it. Mm -hmm. And then the city did it once. And then I think Mrs. Dinkler said she could address this currently. Yeah. Okay. I, um, assuming uh, that someone needs to go out and assess the tree, okay. I appreciate that you put together a very nice package. Um, I can't assess the tree. Right. But someone with the proper knowledge needs to go out and assess the tree. And if the tree fits within the code then the city can issue an order okay um, but the order they'll need to look at the um, uh, the plots between the land and then whoever's property it, it falls upon if the part encroaching your on your land then you are responsible for taking down that piece of the, the part that's hanging over my yard yeah I would have to even though the base of the tree is on there very sorry the piece that falls over your yard is yours and hmm. The, and the rest of it that is on your neighbor's yard is theirs. So I would need to hire somebody to trim the section that leans over my yard partly? You can take down the part that encroaches on your yard. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. You. Any other comments from members of the public? Nope. None. Committee reports none tonight. Resolutions none. Ordinances we have three introductions and Mrs. Berner. Okay, our first ordinance 18-07. An ordinance amending section 1286 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding temporary uses. Ordinance 18-08. An ordinance amending ordinance 14-01 regarding establishing an updated fee schedule for miscellaneous city fees and permits required by the city of New Carlisle, Ohio and ordinance 18-09 an ordinance enacting section 881.17 of the city of new carlisle income tax code for tax years beginning january 1 2016 which adopts sections 718.80 through 718.95 of the ohio revised code other business do you mind reading that no nope. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 until 2 p.m. And we will have a crime watch meeting May 9th at 6.30 here at Smith Park Shelter House. Council, anything for the business? <coughs> I do, real quick. Yes, I'm Ms. sorry to bring it up, but I just want to get this over with. Um, I don't know if anyone else was contacted. Um, I was reached out by a citizen asking about, I don't think it's anything, so don't worry, uh, about a donation met from you, Mr. Mayor, from the Republic Services and Com Incorporation Employees for Better Government. Yes. Okay. Um, 2013. Yeah, exactly. Um, they asked me if, uh, if I knew anything about it. I really don't. Yeah. <laughs> so I tried, to, I tried to actually reach out to them just to not have to bring it up, but they have not called me back. So this is my question. Did you ever hold any position with the Republic Services? Nope. Okay. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Did anyone else get reached out to? Okay. Huh? Any other comments? I've got a few I want to go into tonight. 
Um, Let's try it. Please, sir. Uh, there's a handful of things that we need to talk about tonight, and dealing with council members and ourselves, we have to do it in the public forum. Um, I think there's a handful of things that has been occurring on city council through some of our council members that are extremely questionable and how they're being handled and how uh, some of our city employees have been handled, um, how in general some of our city employees have been handled and how some of our council members conduct business as far as their profession as a city council member. Um, I'll start off with Mr. Lindsay, if you don't mind, the, uh, the gun ordinance that you, I know you were, Pardon me? The, gu the gun ordinance you were mm -hmm. then really, you know, really trying to get put through and worked on. Um, I've, you know, I've only heard a, a little pieces of this gun ordinance that's come through, through uh, Randy, uh, some chit chat around town mostly. Uh, but I've never got any direct, and I, and I think it been brought up actually earlier last year, um, but I've never gotten any emails per se from anyone on council bringing up the details of this ordinance uh, for the city of New Carlisle. But I know there's been a lot of money spent on legal fees researching this ordinance. And me personally, before I would bring something that's so controversial uh, to have looked into and worked on by our city attorney or Randy for that matter, because they both gotta be paid by your tax dollars. I would have brought it to council as a whole and said, you know, what do we all think about this before we were to ever waste even one nickel on it? I mean, if, if it's not gonna get passed and therefore we could have saved potentially around four or $5,000 worth, worth of legal fees, which is what, from what I understand, has been probably brought up to at this point on this particular uh, request. Um, so with that being said, and we all had received a letter today that we could actually go ahead and just put this thing to rest finally for, you know, <clears throat> for our charter, that we can make a motion to finally yay or nay on this if we want to move forward. And that's how we are supposed to do it before it gets passed on to Ms. Dinkler, if, if I am correct in our charter. Mrs. Dinkler. That is correct. There's an inconsistency in the uh, rules of council uh, that I discovered this week. And you do need to make motions before you request the law director to draft ordinances. All right, so do we have a motion? <clears throat> so we can- And I, I don't know if everyone, I sent out a, a privileged correspondence today. Um, and if everyone has an opportunity uh, to see that, I'm happy to. Uh, review with council. I brought the charter with me. The um, inconsistency, it's found in uh, section 6.03. The rules of ordinance, uh, or excuse me, your ordinances in the rules of council uh, for as long as I've known them, for as long as I've been contracted by the city have always had the same provision in them that council could direct the law director to draft ordinances. And so I never had any thought or reason to look at it. Um, I suppose I should have because I reviewed the Department of Law section 603 many times, but never closely in conjunction with the rules of council. And um, it's not unusual that charters and ordinances are inconsistent um, throughout the state. But um, be that as it may, uh, for some reason, I happened upon it uh, this week. And so when I did, I discussed it with Mr. Bridge and I wrote that up for you. But uh, in the second paragraph, of section 603, it states, the director of law shall, on the request of the city manager, or by motion of council, prepare contracts, legislation, bonds, and other instruments in writing and over the director's signature in which the city is concerned. That's one single sentence. So should we do our motion tonight to just to clarify, with now how it works, we'll motion and then you'll bring forward legislation at the next meeting. 
and then we'll vote on it the following meeting. Now, what I'm the way I understand it, may I? Get, go ahead. Is to make the motion to whether we want to accept moving forward with such a moat or such an ordinance. And then if we can vote on it tonight, you know, if we are interested in such an ordinance. I see, I see what you're saying. So it's two, two different things from what she said to what you said. You were talking about Mr. Lindsay's gun ordinance. She's talking about the ordinance to amend the uh, rules of council. Oh, okay, I'm so sorry. That, 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 that's why I was, oh, okay. that's I, why I was like, so I we need that motion. Okay. So, um, so do we want to address that? Do we have a motion on the floor, Mr. Cook? I have a question. Under ordinances and form, I think it says every proposed ordinance or resolution shall be introduced in writing and in the form for final adoption. That's correct. Uh, I don't know. And I will need section four fourteen. I will need to change your rules of council. Well, no, let me finish. Okay. All ordinances or regulations are to be prepared or reviewed as to form and correctness by the director of law. So consequently, if we're bringing forth an ordinance and discussing it, would it not be apropos to have this ordinance be in correct form in order to meet charter plus the Ohio Revised Code prior to being voted upon? The, uh, if I'm understanding your question, are you saying does, and let's just use the topic of concealed carry for purposes of okay. your example, are you asking me, does the legislation have to be drafted <clears throat> in order for a motion to be made? That, and basically that's what I'm reading. Okay, and the answer to that is no, because- Then we are in violation of the charter because it says here it must be in form. Am I, if I'm reading the charter correctly, under 414. Well, and in order for me to prepare legislation, you first must motion to direct me to prepare the legislation. So are we allowed okay. to prepare legislation and not go through you? Let me just work through his example okay. first. You have to motion to direct me to prepare the legislation. Then you have your legislation. Then you vote on your legislation under what you just read. Does that address your question? No. As I am reading this, Every proposed ordinance or resolution shall be introduced in writing and in the form for final adoption. So if we're sitting here and we decide to bring an ordinance forth for gun legislation, let's say, we're not bringing it forth in the final form until it has went through the law director for a form to be correct with the charter and correct with the Ohio Revised Code. It, there's no inconsistency between this section and the section that you're reading. You're giving me the instruction to draft it, and then you're giving me all of your all of you that vote on it just to say draft it. You're not saying that you're all going to agree to it. You're just saying you're agreeing to have the law director draft it, and then you'll think about it in the future as to whether or not you're going to vote up or down, but you're at least agreeing to have me draft it. And then you're going to see it in writing. I'm going to approve to it in form, and it's then going to be voted upon. But if you're all not interested in the concept of something, you can all vote down the motion to have the money spent to even have it drafted. Mr. Cook, are you done? Go ahead. Mr. Lindsay. So if I follow you correctly in what you're saying in your email you sent out this afternoon or your aide or whoever she was, every ordinance and resolution has to be brought before council 
before you can write it. Is that correct? No. Any ordinance that council wants to direct me to write has to be motioned. So it's just council. That's what it says. That, okay. So the, the three ordinances that we just read tonight that we're voting on in two weeks. I didn't write are any. Are probably of them. invalid then, right? No, I didn't write any of the ordinances that you voted on tonight. Th those were drafted by the city manager. At the direction of council. Okay. Okay, well, not the direction of council, not the direction of myself, not council as a whole. Just to clarify. Yeah, those were submitted, if I if I'm remember correctly, by the mayor. That that was my point. Council did not vote on any of those ordinances to have them drafted. The acting manager here, Mr. Kiko, just said the city manager directed you to to uh, to write those. That was my point. Okay. All right. Do you anything else? <laughs> I mean, I understand. I'm pretty sure what you're saying is, is basically we need to make a motion to accept that we would like the law director to move forward with writing up a legal document to prepare for us to vote on after it's prepared. Correct? By us. By us. Yes. yes. And that's what it says. Yes. So it, if it's, are, you, are you done, Sly? Yes. But if it's done by the city manager, then it doesn't have to go through council first. If he's that's the one directing. Correct. Out. City manager gives me ninety-nine percent of my direction. Okay. Because, because they're housekeeping and you know a lot of standard things to do to keep the city operational. They're not per se things for you know. CCW or whatever it may be. Well, yes, I park like you know non-smoking, you know whatever it may be. I serve at the pleasure of the city manager. Okay. Council, anything else? Okay. I, I do have a question. Um, Go ahead. How much money have we spent so far on this ordinance, the CCW ordinance? Forty-two hundred dollars to answer your question. It's about five thousand at this point. About five thousand. Yes. Increased a lot. Was anyone else on council consulted on the gun ordinance? Mr. Cook? I have been aware of this gun ordinance since last fall. And at such time, I think I told Mr. Lindsay that I would not vote for this gun ordinance until probably the, this coming fall, August or September. So I think, and I can speak for Mr. Cobb also, that it was his impression that we are of the same mind. So if this motion or if this gun ordinance had come up anywhere from January 1 through September, it would not have been voted an, an affirmative vote by the two of us, I'm sure. Lindsay had a question okay, for you. That's fine. Mr. Lindsay, still on Mr. Whiting. No. Um, and then what exactly is the CCW? I mean, just so. Concealed carry. Well, I know what it is, but what's the ordinance for? Just so anybody can carry into the city building or to a council meeting? Mr. Lindsay? Uh, that's exactly what I'd like to see. Uh, the, uh, there's a lot of people in this town that carries. Uh, a lot of them, uh, not, I've only seen probably, I'm going to say three or four carry outside of myself openly, but there's a ton of them that has them concealed. Uh, I spot them all the time when I'm out and about because I look for them. Your average citizen doesn't look for a gun. I look for a gun just like that deputy down there does. I spot them in the stores. I spot them out walking. She spots them. And, uh, you know, I don't have a deputy in my back pocket to protect me 24-7 when I'm out and about. Do you, sir? I have a deputy 24-7. Protecting you while you're out running around town or at work or diving, whatever you're doing? No. That's why I carry a gun, because I think and I believe and I feel 
It is my responsibility to protect myself, my family, and anybody that I'm around if somebody chooses to shoot them to cause, cause harm or anything else. I understand uh, there's probably more people that thinks the way I do than not. Okay. I'm still, I'm just trying to figure out what the ordinance is completely. Sorry. So it's, it's for all the ordinance. citizens or? Yes, it's for all the citizens okay. uh, to carry in this building while we're in here having our meetings. I would love to be able to walk into the city building when I'm paying my water bill in case some moron comes in and decides they want to shoot the place up. Or, you know, uh, any store I go to, I'm carrying. Uh, I go to a bank, I'm carrying. You know, there's, there's a whole lot of places you can carry now by law or by the establishment's choice that once upon a time you couldn't. In Ohio, you don't even need a license to walk down the street with being strapped. Otherwise, in other words, having a firearm on your side. Open carry. But the second you climb into a vehicle and <clears throat> that deputy down there sees you, and she don't know you, and she stops you for a violation, road violation, because she can't stop you and ask you why you have a gun. Am I correct, ma'am? Correct. Uh, but as soon as you get in that car, and she stops you for speeding, turn signal, whatever, and you don't have a license, and you got that gun, what happens to you, ma'am? You go to jail, don't you? Immediately, and you forfeit your firearm. Okay. But I think it'd be great to be carrying in here citizens, council, anybody over there that wants to carry, and into the city building. That, that's, I mean, that's my, okay. my thought. Thank you. It's for I, everybody. I, I understand the laws. I was just asking what we're spending $5,000 on. That's what I was I've asking. been working on this for two years, and in my opinion, I've been stonewalled for two years. How were you stonewalled? By nothing being done on it. By whom? In my opinion, the city manager and the city attorney. Okay. <coughs> okay. Council. And I'm, I'm even going to go as far and say when Mr. Lowry was the vice mayor, the mayor at that time asked council what they thought about carrying in here. And all of them said, we don't have a problem with it, including Mr. Lowry. He said he would be good with it. And that is what the uh, the, is the mayor, not his boss, but the mayor at that time asked that question. Mr. Lowry, you had something to say? You good? Yes. I, I didn't say I had a problem with what you were trying to do, Bill. I have a problem with spending $5,000 on something and not knowing a thing about it from you personally as another council member. I got to hear it from other citizens. The bill's putting together something. Well, really? I knew nothing about it. Ask Randy, well, yeah, he's working on it. <clears throat> Lynette's working on it. There's a lot of bickering between other council members about it. How much have we spent on it? $5,000? And I haven't heard a word about it. I mean, I think it would be professionally, you know, courteous to let us all in on it, is all I'm saying. I love, I've got guns myself, and I, I, one day I need to get my concealed gear. I'm just too darn busy, but uh, th that's not my issue. The issue is, is how the whole thing was handled. Council? Hey, Chief. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. You're good? Okay. All right. Anything? I personally have a CCW, and I personally served as a law enforcement officer with Clark County Sheriff's Department for about eight years. I think there's a place and a time for everyone to carry a weapon. If you have a fear of someone doing something to you, or the family protection, I have no problem with it. But if we have a law on the books that says we can't carry in a municipal building, then so be it. Mr. Lowry. I mean, my thoughts are directly. I, I like concealed carry, and I like that you can take it to specific places. I mean, if we have a rule that no one can bring in concealed carry and the bad guy wants to come in and do some damage, that's, that rule's not going to stop him. But at the same time, I think, okay, and, and this particular setup, for example, we're here, you know, administration's there, deputy's there, and 
the audience is there. Odds are none of us are going to be going crazy and shooting someone out in the audience, I hope not. But if someone in the back row decides to take aim at one of us, and we've all got guns, and it's a crowded audience, there's a lot of people between the gentleman with the gun and us up here, when a deputy that's on that side of the room can probably get the better shot with this setup. That's just my particular take. <coughs> I know a lot of government buildings don't allow concealed carry. I mean, but uh, I, I don't mind looking at it. I just, I wish I'd have been included on it after spending 5000 nearly $5,000 of tax taxpayers' money is all I'm saying. Okay. Council? Okay, Mr. Lindsay. Well, Mr. Larry, like I said, I've been working on this just about for two years. I'm going to say at least a year and a half because when I first mentioned it, had it mentioned because Lowell mentioned it for me, he was the mayor, and at that time, I believe, I sent the law director an email requesting the ordinance to be wrote to let council decide. Had I known it was going to take $5,000 and two years, a year and a half later, and still not be anywhere, although I do have an email where all of a sudden the ordinance is written, with exceptions. And in my opinion, in one line it says you can, the next line it says you can't. So I don't even know what the ordinance actually says. And I know what the law is. I know by us being a home rule city or government entity or however you want to phrase it, we have the ability, this council does, to change and have this sign out here removed. When the city manager, him and I had many conversations about it. He said, I don't want anybody in the city building carrying it. I finally said, okay, <clears throat> let's get rid of the sign at the shelter. Because people renting this shelter carries. That sign makes it a felony. It's protecting the people that's written this, renting this place when there isn't a deputy sitting here. And sometimes we don't have a deputy sitting here. And if somebody actually wanted to come in here and do harm to the seven of us or anybody over there, they're going to case the place. They're going to be coming for several meetings. They're going to know where the deputy's at. They're going to know what they're doing. And the deputy's going to be the first one dead when they come in here, if somebody decides to come in here. Now, she's dead or whoever the deputy is. Who's going to grab her gun? And if she is alive, she ain't going to give that gun up. And now we're all sitting ducks. Well, also, if the citizens are allowed to carry at the same time, and so and so comes, <clears throat> the subject comes to the back, say X amount of people are carrying, they start firing this way, that person, that person's carrying, that person, that person, that person over there, and that person over there are carrying. So that subject will be taken out within seconds. Yeah. Uh, is, council, I, I, I know. I was in the military. Council? Mr. Mayor, I moved to adjourn. We have a second. Second. Uh, Mr. Well, we weren't. If I may. There's a motion on the floor, Mrs. Dinkler. I, Your Honor, I did not hear. Mr. Lindsay made a motion to adjourn and seconded by Mr. Chammy. I, I did. I, I forgive me. I did not hear the motion. Uh, I, may, I did make the motion, ma'am. I, I, I have already said twice. Yeah. I, I did know. not hear. I think everyone discussion. knows that I have serious hearing impairment. Two things. One, real quick, could you shut that off? Can you shut those off? <clears throat> and two, I had a handful of things I would like to go over. There's a motion on the floor for, for adjournment. Mrs. Dinkler, so I'm going to ask you because we don't vote on adjournment. We already had a motion to adjourn in a second, so is the meeting adjourned? According to our rules of council. Oh, that's all right. Right, thank you. I'm sorry. Your motion oh, is what? Sorry. We had a motion to adjourn. It was seconded. So our, is our meeting now adjourned as they normally are after a second? Yes. All right. Meeting is adjourned. Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'll just that's how the rules are. I right. understand. But you didn't let me you didn't ask if I had anything else to say. I asked counsel. I have <laughs> that's all right.